Hey guys, how's it going? Jay Siemens here. Welcome back to the shop. Today we're doing a little gear type video. We are modifying the Aquaview HD7i and we are taking it to the next level. So there's kind of, you know, there's the HDI7 and the HDI10 being seven inch screen, 10 inch screen. There's the pro version and the, the, the standard version. One of the reasons you may want to go with the seven over the 10 is the seven has increased runtime. They have the same battery inside. So you're getting I think probably 20 to 30% less maybe on the 10 inch screen. 10 inch screen is great and a lot you know easier to watch in the shack and everything. But when you know you're doing screen recording and doing some longer days, the seven inch might be might be the choice for you. And as well, it's a little more compact. But first thing we're gonna do to this unit is we're gonna swap out the battery. So we gotta open this baby up. All right, accessories enclosed. We got the travel cover, we got a cigarette charger. We got the wall charger. We will deal with that later. Boom. <sighs> new camera gear, new fishing gear. This is kind of like my two passions together. Alrighty, she is free. Beautiful seven inch screen, nice compact package. I think this is probably around like maybe 75 feet of, uh, of cable, but uh, yeah, we're gonna disassemble this thing. We're gonna get into the guts of it and uh, that's, that's where it's gonna begin. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just take this head unit off. There's just that one connector on the front and this one connector does the power and does the camera. So we're gonna take that off. And now we gotta pop off these six little rubber grommets, whatever you wanna call them. Pretty easy. You can see inside of it here, it's, uh, it takes a sort of Allen key to make that work. So I took an Allen key, I modified it, and I turned it into a drill bit. I should note, I haven't done this modification before. I just had some ideas. I've been brainstorming. I'd watched uh, another video. I'll, I'll link it below. A very similar uh, modification the guys did. I, I want to do a couple other things. But we got the top plate off. Going to disconnect the battery here. All right, so here's the battery it comes with. Great. It's a, it's a lead acid. Uh, you're probably going to get somewhere between four to six hours of runtime, which is great for a lot of situations. But, you know, I'm always trying to make things as easy as possible for myself. So on a lot of typical fishing days early in the season, that's gonna be enough, four to six hours is fine. But sometimes, you know, you're camping on the ice or for me, I'm doing longer days and filming when it comes into, you know, ice fishing in March and that sort of thing. So we are gonna swap out the battery. Right here, we have the 12 volt, 10 amp hour Dakota lithium. Couple differences with lithium batteries. You will notice how much lighter they are. I'm actually gonna weigh it for a quick comparison. This one's 4.6. This is the battery I took out of my other one. I'm gonna weigh this one too. This one's 5.5, uh, a similar, I think it depends on which unit you lit, you'll get a different battery. And then here's the 10 amp hour Dakota Lithium. Yeah, like 2.9 pounds. So almost half the weight you're cutting. And with ice fishing gear, whenever you can cut weight is great. But beyond that, you're basically doubling your runtime and that is what's the most appealing to me in the past I've you know brought along a, a separate battery like this you can plug it into the back and charge it and that's great but uh, you know if I can swap this battery out do the little bit of work now and it saves me from bringing another battery out on the lake absolutely I'm gonna do this so something to keep in mind is typical chargers the charging system through this will charge your battery or I, I'm pretty sure it will um, but it won't charge it to full capacity. With, with lithium batteries, you need a specific lithium charger. This is your Dakota lithium charger. So this will charge it to 100%. So what we need to do is not only swap the battery out, but we need to run a little port so we can have a little charging pigtail out the side so we can charge this battery separately because um, Aquaview has its own proprietary charging system. So we're not gonna run it through that. As well, when we do that step, we're gonna add a couple, uh, a couple accessories. Drop the battery in, fits like a glove. You can put that washer around there. A lot of this I'm figuring out on the go. So this is what I picked up. This is a quick connect extension cable. Yeah, it's just got two kind of little quick connect. I don't know if they're called pigtails or what they're called, but this is gonna make it a lot easier um, rather than opening it up and charging it. So we got this, I chopped it in half. I'm gonna cut these alligator clips off. I'm gonna put one end onto the charger and I'm gonna put one end onto the batteries here. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the charger ready. I cut those pigtails off. So here's the one end that I cut off. Make sure that you match them up accordingly. Put a little heat shrink tubing on. I'm gonna turn over here so it can show up on the camera above. A little heat shrink tubing. We've got the two ends. Um, I'm just gonna crimp them together. Step is pretty basic. 
All right, so we crimped it together. Now I'm gonna slide this heat shrink tubing over. And now we're gonna whip out the heat gun. So now we have the quick connecting end on the charger. That's the first step. This is so much better than dealing with, uh, dealing with little alligator clips too. If for, for other charging situations, I like to just put these quick connect ends on. All right, and here's the other end of it. This one has a cap. This is just my little short section of it. And uh, it's just as a cap so we can, you know, cover it up when we're not charging. So obviously I don't only want to extend my runtime. I also want to add that the little USB adapter. I've talked about this before. This is just a little cheap deal off Amazon. I'll, I'll link it below. It's like 10 or 20 bucks and it's got two USB uh, adapters on it. This is like a little inverter uh, and then you can charge your phone. But more importantly, I want to be able to run my recorder. This is the Avermedia Live Gamer Portable 2. This is your device that takes your HDMI output from your camera and records onto a micro SD card right there. So this is what I, I think this thing is used for for gamers for, you know, recording their uh, their screen captures, but as well, it is the best device for recording your AquaView. So typically what I have to do is I'd have to bring along, you know, a cell phone battery pack or I'd, I'd bring along uh, another Dakota lithium power box or something. And that's fine. And it, it ran it, but it was one more battery to bring. And it was just one more thing to think about one more thing to charge at the end of the day. So first off, we're going to add these little these little piggyback devices. I'll get a close-up of it in my hand. These are kind of good for any 12 volt batteries, but uh, basically you slide it over your terminals. It just allows you to attach a few more things on it. So there's kind of three things we need to attach to this battery. It's our new charging system, the AquaView power, and the USB. So we're gonna start by sliding these little deals on, and then we're gonna work from there. One thing I'm gonna do for a little easier access is I'm gonna just disconnect this on the bottom so we can get at this panel. All right, so we added that little extra connector, whatever you wanna call it. So on one end, we're gonna connect the charging dongle. On the other end, we're gonna connect the USB. It's not super clean. I wanna make sure that it's gonna fit flat, but there is a little clearance in there. So, so the next step is gonna be drilling a hole where these cables can stick out, the charging cable and the USB. So I think right there is where we're gonna put the hole. I'm gonna unplug things right now. We're gonna drill the hole from the back side to make sure we don't mess with anything else. All right, so this is where we're gonna pass the charging dongle through and our two USBs, and then we're gonna cover it up when we're done yet. All right, so here's what we got hooked up. There's our three black, there's our three red, there's our USB, our camera, and our charging all hooked up. Now we're gonna hook it to the battery and we're gonna see if we can kind of tuck everything in here and close it up. That's gonna be the real moment of truth. So we're gonna kind of just squeeze everything in there as nicely as we can. We'll take a little bit of finesse. Okay, I'm finessing a big walleye. Ooh, we might've done it. All right, we're not gonna mess with that at all because we got everything to fit. All right, she is suctioned in. So this one spot here, obviously where all the cords are coming out, could be an issue with waterproofing. Show you guys on the GoPro this little plate. We're gonna just fasten it on top and it's just gonna kind of have a neat little cover for these cables. It'll kind of force them out the backside. I'm probably gonna glue those two right there. And this one I'll probably just leave dangling loose so it has a little bit of flex. Take a look at that. Look how clean that is. So right there, you got the charging port. There you got the USBs. I could also, you know, run this to an external battery if I do want to use more than this battery for the day. The last step, guys, I'm going to take this recording device. I'm going to get a little 3M, uh, this is like Velcro tape. I'll show you guys there. I'm going to put some on the bottom of the quarter, some on the top of the uh, camera housing. And then when I stick this camera down, It'll have a spot to hold. I won't worry about bouncing it around if I just want to grab it by the handle. So now when I get to the spot, I'm just going to smack that right down. All right, we got the two USBs. JB welded on. I'm not sure if that's the best way to fasten them. I guess they could break off, but it's not a big deal. Um, yeah, we're going to let it dry for like 20 minutes. And then we're going to put everything back together and show you the final rig. Looking at the back end, the business end where we made our modifications, once again, that Little dongle is where you're gonna charge. There's a cap on it. We've got our two USB. So this is what it's gonna look like when we record. We've got that little device I was telling you about. All right, so it's got that Velcro on the bottom. It'll grip right in there. So we've got our HDMI plugged in. We've got our uh, recording device powered right here, which is so handy. And then if you want, you know, add your GoPro on the side right here, filming towards your tip up or you jigging or whatever you might wanna do. You run the power cord right there. And it's just so much less to worry about. I, I can't stress enough. If you wanna get into filming, uh, simplifying things will improve your odds of getting the shot. If I can, I just am always trying to make things as simple as possible. Obviously this took me, you know, probably an hour to do all this now, 
but next time I go fishing and the time after and the time after, I'm gonna have a battery that's gonna last probably eight hours. I'm not gonna have to worry about bringing a battery pack along for my recording device as well for a GoPro. And, uh, and I lost a couple pounds off the whole package. So I cannot wait to hit the ice with this. Stay tuned for some videos with some sick underwater footage. Thank you guys for watching.